Hey there, everybody. It's uh, Friday morning. We're getting some rain. The storm actually tracked in overnight, so uh, I missed a good body of it, but the forecast is calling for two more days of scattered showers, so we'll continue monitoring these systems, but where we have uh, a current downpour happening, I figured we would take a look at what we've been doing on the land and uh, maybe chase the water back off of the property, see where it goes. Stick around. We're currently at the bottom of the duck trail, which comes down past these and leans into this main bed at the base of the field pine at the bottom of what will be the main staircase. I didn't notice evidence of much sheeting down the duck trail, but when I come over into this area, you can start off um, you can see a lot of the vegetation is all laying in one direction, which is a good sign of the path of the runoff. I mean, we know that it runs at 90 degrees to slope, so you can figure out a base catchment and water system map. You figure out your watershed by looking at contour maps um, pretty easily. It's just drawing right angles and figuring out where your property sits in relation to those right angles. Let's see if I can link a video that I watched that helped explain it. But you can see some of these areas of washout and where leaves and sticks have gathered as the rain fell. So this is uncontrolled slope. And I think we should take a look at where else we're going. So we're going to come up this way and take this little trail that hasn't been officially opened yet. If we pan to the left here and look down slope, you'll notice that there's just another little berm and area. And I think if you can see where the pine trees are on the downhill side. I think I'm going to make another catchment area there and try to backfill some of this up to a grade to make it a little bit more workable. You can see my little water path into that system there. There are two trails to pick from. Oh my gosh, the choices. My forsythia in the woods. We've also planted oaks and black cherries back here. In addition to seeding out several of the other understory plants. Yesterday I received another set of seeds we ordered and I'll talk about those in another upcoming video. But over here, this step is way too high. I'm gonna add an intermediary step. But when we look, we have no evidence of any runoff. You can see that we have almost no trails. There's a little bit, I think, going this way but I don't think it's been very crazy at all. It looks like the rocks and the grade of these steps has been working pretty well. If I get real close and you can see these guys, that's not covered very well at all. Um, these are the Michellas that I was talking about in that previous video. And I'll come in here with some more leaves as soon as I'm done with this shot and get these all covered back up but I have very little pooling which means that these are draining okay I feel no squishiness to the ground which means that my compaction was good I'm not pushing any water out and there's no evidence of the water running off of the fronts either so, I'm actually pretty happy with this. 
So I'm going to chase this back down towards the pond, dry off my lens so I can see what I'm showing you folks, and then we'll, we'll follow it back from the pond to where it goes. Back in a sec. We're on an embankment on the far side of the pond from where we just were, looking at the creek that runs off on the south edge of the property, and it is considerably full already. I think it has to do with the improved catchment up top and the additional organic matter being able to hold more water and then plume further down as we get towards the basin. We're not at the lowest point of elevation, but we are getting pretty close and the rate of travel for the water does tend to slow down once we get back this far. The dog's out here going, where is he? I'm wet. I'm really surprised he's not up at the front under the awning. Let's take a little walk back to the uh, actual permaculture zone 5 of the property. Alright, last leg of this trip, except for getting back to where it's dry for us. Hope you're all having a nice dry morning, or at least that you're not quite as soaked as I am. As I was saying before about the contour maps, you can take a look at contour maps of just about any resolution. The, uh, the finer the details, the more accurate it'll be, but you can get a sense of where water's going to flow. But it's definitely worth sitting foot on the ground because there are these micro undulations and little pockets, and no matter how fine your detail, the, the satellites and the broad surveys are not going to pick them up. So you won't catch things like this little scoop here before we come down into this little chunk. And this little chunk leads back in that direction. But because this mound has a weird shape, we've got another little bit of water right over there. So we'll walk down the center of this to keep me from soaking my boots all the way through. And I'll try to get as much in as I can, but I don't think I'll get everything. So, even though our pond is the largest expression of where the water table is as we go back towards the river, we have these little undulations and tiny dips in the woods. And we haven't done much in the way of modification back here. For one, I, I only have so much bandwidth and I'm not done making the uphill areas as conducive as I'd like them to be for the plants that we're trying to reintroduce to the area. So I think that work should take precedence before I muck about with an area that has a decent mix of age in it. It might really be worth coming back to take out these eye branches though. the tiniest bit of flow. If you're watching for the air bubbles, which is what I'm doing, you can see them generally moving this way, but at a very, very slow rate. And so we'll keep going. We hit another almost level area. You can see that this bit of water is almost standing from the amount of leaf debris that's here. But as we come over, we have another drop. 
And we can see the rate of flow increasing. Tiny little mini rapids there. Look at it go. And we keep going. Back, back, back. I'm just going to take a moment in this bright area. You can see how much water is down here on this basically floodplain. And I think part of the reason that this area is so much wetter this year, even the spots that we haven't touched, is partly due to the increased water retention up top, the duck pond, the berms, the swales, the catchment area. Look at that little waterfall. It's only like two inches. But you can see how much speed it picked up coming in here. Just slow it down a little bit. Keep on moving. This was the wrong side to take, guys. And this right here is why we trim and take out some of the lower lying branches and lift the canopy so that it's safe to come back into the woods take care of things that need taken care of. Without losing an eye. Oh look, here's another little waterfall catchment. This one is because these trees have caught so much debris that they've managed to build a little a little set of berms and you can see where the water is flowing over one of the roots in this massive cascade that's moving very fast and I think I'd like to slow that down just a little bit Let's see what we've got. Okay, the water over here is flowing much more slowly again. There's still these little drops as we go. And we can see Now, I can imagine someday in the distant, distant future where a portion of this is maybe backed up or blocked up to make space for a pond. I don't think it's going to be anytime terribly soon, but it's nice to dream. One thing I'll point out is that We have, well, a creepy blue tarp just off the back corner, but we're about to hit the edge of the property. If you can see that little pink mark on the tree right there, that's the back edge. It 
So this is how the water flows off of our property before heading down further towards the river. I think that there's a lot of opportunity to slow this water even further and make it so that the downstream neighbors along the riverbank don't have quite as much of a storm surge as they'd need to deal with at the current time. Um, generally speaking, if we didn't run back towards the river, I'd recommend talking to your city or town's water commission or your sewer department, whoever handles storm surge and runoff in your area. It's a good idea to check and see what the regulations and uh, rules are before you go about mucking with your watershed too heavily. Especially if you live close to your neighbors. But in the situation that we're in, there's no one behind us until after you cross the river, so I'm not too, too concerned currently. That's going to do it for us today, guys. My feet are soaked. My pants are soaked. I think this raincoat has lost its effectiveness and needs to be resealed. So, get out there today if you're getting some rain. Or whenever, but get out there. Watch how water moves on your site. Are there places where it tends to want to collect? Can you accentuate that? Can you nudge it in a slightly more productive direction? I'd love to hear what you guys are working on. Share your thoughts. What can we do better here? Does seeing this give you an idea for something on your place? Let us know. It can get lonely out in the woods. Till next time. Thanks for watching. Happy planting.